It's episode 15 of Chit Chat, and convention season is upon us. Whether it's the big cons or some of the smaller regional cons, we run down the entire list. And of course, talk about some of the games that have hit the convention circuit already this year. Welcome back to Chit Chat. Episode 15 is where we're at. Uh, we are going to talk about conventions today because convention season is upon us. Uh, just last week, Jeremy and I were at Gamma. So I don't know if that was that the beginning of convention season for us? I think so. Well, for us, definitely. Yeah, we saw a lot of people. In fact, we saw our brand new sponsor, the guys at Broken Token. Uh, and they gave us a little heads up that uh, he has something coming for one of the games we've been playing a lot of lately, Rising Sun. Yeah, they have an insert for it. It's Talk about time. a game that needs an insert, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. For real. Super excited for that. I have we, the, one of the only inserts I own is, is their Blood Rage insert, which was perfect. I, I wonder, rates. I mean, we saw them opening the box and looking at it, but you asked the question, is it going to be able to be contained into one box? I don't know the answer to that. Yeah. I don't uh, know if that's even possible, is it? I don't either. With all the Kickstarter with rewards, all, it might have to be both boxes. Mm -hmm. I just want it to be organized Yeah, yeah. yeah. for a change. Yeah, yeah. It, it's, it should be good. We didn't see too much of it, but based on what they've done for Blood Rage and others like that in the past, those Simon games have to be like the ones that they just kind of like go this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What are we going to do with them. this? They're great. So let's get into it. As always, Ryan, Gary, David, Jeremy, we're going to dive in and talk about convention season and all the different types of cons that there are because there's a lot of different types. Yeah, there's small cons, medium cons, large cons. <laughs> I think we're going to have to skip over the small cons. Yeah, we don't go to much hundreds, of the small Well, there's hundreds of them. Yeah. There's a lot of local cons. I mean, like we regional, just, regional cons. Well, I mean, when you're talking about a small con, we came back from Gamma, and then we immediately went into IndyCon, which is like our local convention. I think it was the 11th year of mm -hmm. doing this, and it's an invite only. I'm like sure 200 I'll, people, right? Yeah, yeah, 200 and some people. But those are... You know, it's hard to rate a con, but those are always fun because you yeah. know everyone there. Mm -hmm. You're playing games with people that you probably see either on weekends or every other weekend these are people that have probably families and it's just good to get together for us the best part is that we get to play older games yeah. like i really hyper focus into playing games that i don't traditionally get to play games that are in my collection that like concordia mm -hmm. i got to introduce you to that game and i haven't played that in for some time because we're so focused great, on though. doing new stuff right yeah i'd like to get some older games too what i end up finding myself doing is taking all the new games we've played mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. introducing them to new people mm -hmm. i love doing that so i take you know a lot of those to a con like that uh, same with bgg con i don't take games to that but the problem there is you go there and there's all the new hotness from mm -hmm. essen and mm -hmm. stuff like that so you don't yeah. really get to get old games out on the well, table i think that's um, towards that yeah I think that's kind of a way you'd catalog these conventions, right? I mean, for people at home that, that don't know a lot about the convention um, circuit or what that looks like, you have conventions like BGG Con, um, to a lesser extent Dice Tower Con, conventions that are designed around playing games. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. BGG is where you go to play games, Dice Tower Con is where you go to play games, and then you have conventions like Gen Con, um, Essen, which these conventions are all about our sales conventions. Basically, Mostly, yeah. yeah, you'll get some like gaming in. Yeah, you'll get yeah. gaming yeah. in while you're there, but they feel more like expos than they do chances to like meet up with people and game, right? Right. And yeah. then you have Origins. Yeah, just that level kind of in the between. Which is kind of in the middle Origins of Origins is a lot like I. I feel Origins is a lot like Gen Con or Essen on a mini scale, slightly smaller scale. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's growing, but it's it's it kind of covers all those same bases. The other type of con, like Gamma, that we just came back from, it's really not a Con a trade for the show. public, it's really yeah. a trade mm -hmm. show, literally, mm -hmm. for all the different facets of the industry. You've got the publishers, you've got the retailers, and then you've got a bunch of Joes like us going out <laughs> there to cover it all. Mm -hmm. it's, it's basically a networking situation. We, yeah. get down, we go down there, we talk to people, we learn about games coming out for the next year. Uh, we're working on stuff you know, for our shows, trying to figure out what kind of program we want to have, how we can help publishers. But we did get to play new games. We got to yeah. see a lot of new stuff. Um, and I'm gonna talk about one right now, Teo Tawakin, like, uh, no, he couldn't, you know, he couldn't he couldn't no yeah. but, but you know, th th this is good for us because we don't typically get to see a lot of those European publishers. Uh -huh. And NSKN is a, is a publisher that's a very small publisher who's releasing what I consider to be a very big game this year. Uh, it's, I think it's gonna be massively popular just because of the pedigree in which the, the designer has come from in the past. And we had a chance to sit down and play that game and had we not gone to Gamma, we would have not, I even known that was there. I mean, we I'd already known about the game coming out, but we had no idea it was actually going to be there in physical form. No, we were walking around the exhibit floor before it opened, and we just happened to see it up on the wall at, S mm. at NSKN, 
And we're like, oh, I wonder if they have that. I'm like, do you have that? And they're like, yeah, do you want to play it? So we scheduled <laughs> yeah. the time to come yeah. right back. We played through a whole game of it, which yeah. we had no idea going that we were going to get to play that. And I know that was one so my number two on number two most, most anticipated yeah. list this year. So that was really exciting. Uh, also, going to any of these conventions, and particularly again at Gamma, you get to meet a lot of people. Not only people that are out there in the community, but sort of people that are in the industry that we don't necessarily mingle with all the time. Mm -hmm. Like I spent. I almost slept the night every night with Connor McGooey and uh, Clay his wife. And Clay. And yeah. Clay and his wife. From uh, Capstone. Yeah. From Capstone and Connor from the uh, Inside from Up. Inside Up yeah, Games. Inside yeah. Up Games, yeah. Um, played some of, uh, actually one of his new upcoming things. Um, and just getting to know people a little bit better and spending time with them, we it, it's just a really good time. I mean, yeah, we're connoisseurs of that stuff. Like we, we uh, both of us went to Roxley Games booth and talked to Manny. Yeah. who is the original contributor for Dice Throne and also the artist. Mm -hmm. Like, that was a fascinating one-hour conversation uh, just about his passion for, like, art yeah, where he and, comes and design. From, yeah. yeah, And those are just cool things to hear that you wouldn't typically hear if we're just talking to them about doing a Kickstarter for them. We actually got to meet the guy and talk to him and understand his, uh, you know, his passion for what he's well, doing. That's the great thing about conventions, especially the bigger conventions like Gen Con and Origins. You know, if you're out there and you're a fan, you're going to get to meet people and talk to them. I mean, mm -hmm. people in the industry are excited to share their games with the public. You know, mm -hmm. that's what they're there for. So when you go up to a booth, you know, and you're being sold a game, chances are you might not even realize it, but you might be getting sold that game by the guy that designed that game. Yeah. Or yeah. the guy that runs, like Clay, you were just talking about Clay Capstone, works his own booth. Mm -hmm. So when you go to Capstone, it's not just somebody selling you a game. It is the guy that's running this company. company yeah. yeah. Um, selling you that game and I know you know Simon is like that this big company Simon but you might be standing right next to Eric Lang designer of Blood Rage and <laughs> Rising Sun and not even realize it so it's kind of a, a good idea like to take stock and be like it's a very hands-on industry who am I talking sure. to and, here right like most people are very approachable too and that's what I like a lot because they're just as much fans as we are yeah you know they have a game they want to share it with everybody. that's why they're designing the games you know and I it's been great like going to these conventions and meeting up with like Eric Lang or whoever it is. Yeah. And they're like, hey, yeah, let's sit down and play my game. Okay, that sounds great. You, you know? get a lot and, of that at yeah. like Origins. Or like yeah, you'll get a lot of that if you get a chance to go to these conventions. conventions and they're going to be yeah. very approachable and, and you know, have a really great time doing that. Well, and also, uh, while we're on the topic of just kind of meeting people, mm -hmm. uh, last year when we went to Grand Con, you went up there yes. with me. And <laughs> that was the first opportunity I really had to spend quality time with, Tom and the guys from Dice yeah, Tower. Yeah. Like we never, we, you know, we always pass each other, mm -hmm. courteous wave, Mingle. that sort of thing at, mm -hmm. at, at conventions. But we chatted with them. We ended up playing a few games, uh, introduced them to Azul, Azul. yeah, and then right. went out to dinner. <laughs> and you know, it's a really good place to. And we saw them again at Gamma. This mm -hmm. uh, spent some time in the arcade with them playing Mario Kart <laughs> in the arcade in Reno. Um, it's just a good time to remind ev you know everyone who's there remind ourselves that we're all like. In this together. In this together yeah, yeah. and passionate about yeah. this hobby. And yeah, a lot of people really cool. outside of the industry, you know, I went to conventions for a long time before I was ever part of it. It's a, just a great chance to meet up with your friends, right? Like I know a lot of people have their groups that they see each other four or five times a year at these conventions. And it's kind of the same way for industry people. You kind of have your little groups you like to hang out mm -hmm. with. But it's an excuse. You get people from all over the world together to play games. I mean, it's an experience you're not really going to find outside of a convention too much. So for people that are new to conventions, what kind of, beyond the large ones, your medium weight, like your BGGs and your Dice Towers, what would you guys suggest uh, for newbies? Like which were the ones, if they were to pick a couple of them that they could target and go to, what would I, you guys say? You know, I know for me, if... I know your answer here. Yeah, I do. And I, yeah, and I, I, do I haven't been, but I, I totally want to I tell go. you, Dice Tower Con is fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. We went I, last I agree. year. It was a great time. You're literally two. You're down. The, I don't even know if it's two miles down the road from Disney World. You know, yeah. location, location. Yeah. It location. is location. You yeah, can play absolutely. games, go to Disney and eat lunch, and come back two hours later, be right back playing games. Again. There's a huge appeal to that for but sure. There's a. Gr it, it's just. It's really well done because it's it's developed by you know those guys at DT who are fans of board games. They know how to run a, a convention where you're going to go and play games. Mm -hmm. And the way it's set up, in fact, they've done things that I've seen other cons start to to uh, do themselves like when they have these tables, hey, we need players, and they got these stands. We need players or we need a teacher 
or whatever. And it really, I mean, there's just games always going on. You'll always find somebody to play something that you want to play that you've never played. Somebody will teach it to you. Yeah, I think. And that's a really good one. And I know Origins, because last year was my first time at Origins. I thought Origins was a really great con. You know, some people don't like the gigantic. There's so many people yeah. like the Gen Cons or maybe the S. It's, it's a little overwhelming. You go to these Origins, you're going to get all the same games. It's a lot, you know, less hectic. Mm -hmm. And honestly, a lot of these people that we're talking about that are in the industry, whether it's in the entertainment part of it or in the designing part, are a lot more accessible because they're kind of more at ease too. Yeah. And you can sit down and play those games with them. I, I love the spectacle of Gen Con, but I also mm -hmm. appreciate what Origins does. They, they keep the exhibit hall small and concise but they keep that same amount of space over in the play hall. Yeah. yeah. So you can walk that hall. There's also people selling in there if you want to peruse and, and find something yeah, the to way play. Yeah, the way they've merged their two spaces yeah. feels good to me. Yeah. Like I like Gen Con too, but oftentimes it's so big that it's so compartmentalized, you're either in the vendor hall, <laughs> right? so you're going to be looking at publisher after publisher, or <laughs> you're going to a separate place to play games. Yeah. I thought I went to PAX last year too, PAX had a very similar feel to Origins. PAX Unplugged? PAX mm -hmm. Unplugged. Um, because it was one big area, and mm -hmm. is, you happened to walk away from the last publisher, and then there was just tables and tables and tables and tables mm -hmm. yeah. uh, to play games on. So it felt like you're all in the same space, and that you didn't have to go to a different location. Mm -hmm. I mean, with that said, we both love <laughs> Gen Con. Because Absolutely. of, because of the spectacle, I, you say all the yeah, time, you can yeah. spend days just walking through the vendor hall. You can't really explain Gen Con to somebody <laughs> until they've been to Gen Con. When you walk through the doors for the first time and you see that exhibit hall spread in front of you, I mean, it's like walking into Disney World. Like, Well, when you walk in at Gen Con that first crazy. day and there's literally... 50,000 people yeah. in the hallway. If you're there when it opens. You gotta be, if you're gonna do it, you might as well enjoy the spectacle. Get there when it opens right. and that that rush yeah. Yeah. into, and it's just, you'll spend the first whole day, in, unless you're just there to go play games. Let's let's go to BGG Con and CMON yeah. Expo, because I also want to touch on those. Those are very special. BGG Con is, as you said, they have that new hotness area. It's a lot of industry people there, but it's also <laughs> a lot of just passionate gamers. This mm -hmm. is the place you're gonna go to get in a group of people that really know board gaming. To play. Yeah, to mm -hmm. play. Like these are the experts who've been around the industry for a long time. And I'm not talking just publishers or, or industry people, I'm talking about consumers, people that just eat up all this content and love it. And that's a great place to be because they know games and they mm -hmm. want, and when they see media people like us, it feels good because they want to introduce us to things too. Like, I don't know how many times I walked into the hall and they said, hey, have you played this? <laughs> nope, well, let's play it because yeah. I want to show you this game. And that's really cool. Yeah. It's hardcore at, at yes. BGG, hardcore gaming. Again, it doesn't make it any less friendly though. No. Like, I remember not I've only all. been to BGG Con once. And again, I go back to one of the things I love doing. Uh, and I'm not going to say I'm good at teaching games, but when I do know a game, I feel I enjoy teaching a game. And at BGG Con, I love nothing more than walking around and like, I'm that annoying guy who like, if, if there's four people who look like they don't know what they're doing and they're reading through the rule book as they try to set it up. Let me help you. I'm like, I'm pretty hey. sure he did that the entire BGG <laughs> BG, I did last hey, year. Hey, you BG know, BG right? Yeah. I, I, well, I enjoy doing that. And if the group is receptive to it, uh -huh, some people yeah. are like, dude, back off. <laughs> we know how to play a game. But then there's some people are like, oh, sure, that'd be awesome. Yeah. And... I love doing. I mean, my voice went and, sore. And the great, the great thing in a place like that too, you're not alone. There's a lot of people yeah. that do that who are willing to sit down and teach you a game. It's harder at the larger conventions. Well, it's a, to it's, find a that. it's a community. It you know, like places like yeah. you're talking about Dice Terracon or PAX or even BGG, they have this community built up. And if you're there, you're you're part of the community. I mean, it might be your first time ever at BGG, yeah. but like, it doesn't matter, right? Because yeah. people are going to embrace you. You you shouldn't have any fear walking up to. Grab it, like, David, can you come teach me this game? Like, And that, yeah. that brings up a great point that I wanted to make, and I don't want to get into Gen Con, but that's my first experience when I, when I, when I experienced this, was going into Gen Con the first couple times before I was into board games that much, I felt very timid about, like, even, like, do I just walk up to a table and mm -hmm. sit down? Is there a list somewhere? Mm -hmm. I don't know what to do. And the one thing I would tell anyone is just go. Just go sit down and... Mm -hmm. If anyone says, uh, "Sorry, you're not supposed to sit down," they're gonna be—they're generally gonna be nice about yeah. it. They're probably gonna say, 
oh, do you, the list is over there. They're going to be helpful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You're not likely to sit down at a game table if you're not supposed to and have someone go, what are you doing, man? Like, they're, everyone's pretty welcoming in this, in this hobby. Well, everyone's so yeah. I, they I would play. They that. want to play yeah. these, those games they just bought in the expo hall. Right. So if you're the extra, they hey, sit down, we'll, exactly. we'll play. <laughs> and that, that was kind of my first experience with Gen Con. Because, you know, they have the whole list where you can sign up to play a certain game. Or you can just get those general tickets, which last every year, after, you know, if you keep them. But I would go up to just tables. I didn't have a spot. You stand there. Hey, we got an extra spot. You can go ahead and sit down. It's yeah. time to start playing. There, you know, and they'll teach you the game, which is great. Well, and people have made great friendships. Absolutely, like, I've there's guys great I know at mentioned. least still just on Facebook because they were from out of town. But people who I met at some of my very earliest Gen Cons, just sitting down, we played like a Takanoko tournament or something <laughs> together, and that, you know, it's it's really interesting that you meet someone like that in that environment, and then. Just that kind of keeps yeah. you in you, contact. You keep in touch yeah. with a lot of these people, yeah. and then you see them at other conventions throughout the year, which <laughs> right. is the craziest thing. Like, you know, you run into people, and maybe you can't quite place them. They probably can't quite place you, but it's like, <laughs> didn't we game together? Are we Facebook friends? Right? Didn't we game yeah. together at some point? Like, it, it's kind of a cool experience. The other ones I want to talk about: Simon Expo. Yeah. And then one I want to go to this year is Geekway of the West because yeah. we've heard great things from someone That's in another our local game convention. group who goes to that all the time. But CMON Expo was a great time for us too. We got to talk to a lot of the media people there all three days, play games, and really just kind of delve into a small community of people because it's not a very big expo. It's no, maybe it's less than a thousand people. Is that, that are one there. in Atlanta? Yeah. It's in Atlanta, yeah. Okay. Down there near a their couple headquarters. Of months, actually. And yeah, we went down there last year and hung out with, uh, well, Marty. Mm-hmm. And um, got to meet Tantrum House. And really yeah, spend time and, with and, them and, and Dice Tower. It's always fun meeting people that do the same, you know, in the media too, because we don't get a lot of time with them. And like we said about Tom and the, and those guys, mm-hmm. sometimes you look at those, you know, I think people outside looking in look at us like as competitive, but it's so much fun to sit down and play games right. with these people. I know Simon Expo. I mean, this isn't the last you'll hear us talk about. Don't mess with Cthulhu, mm-hmm. but. We had been introduced to that game, and we took it to Simon Expo last year, which is not a Simon game. Yeah. <laughs> but we sat down and played it with like ten people, yeah. all, you know, uh, Game Boy Geek and Mark Street and all sorts of people, and had a blast, it was a blast. playing yeah, it. Absolutely. And it's just like we said, we can go on and on. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's just a fun, welcoming environment. All these cons. Before we get to Gen Con, I want to talk about, like, what's your favorite size con? All the ones we're talking about. Because mm-hmm. we e- we even haven't talked about some of the ones. <clears throat> like, there's the gathering, which is sort of invite only, which right. is, like, not really even a con, but like a... Which we don't have invites for like yet. Like a retreat. No. <laughs> no, we not don't. Invited. So somebody, yeah. This is our... This whole episode is a ploy <laughs> for us to be invited get it, like, no. to the gathering. No. Um, That's fine. But, but there, is no, there are those con. sorts of things. If I were to pick a con size, I would... I love the hustle and bustle of Gen Con. Like, yeah. I mean, that's, to me, like, I live for those moments. I wake up at, like, 5 in the morning. I Uber <laughs> it down from, because we live here in Indianapolis. I'll Uber it down since I don't really need to, I don't want to park my car in that place. <laughs> and and I spend yeah. all day there. I mean, I, I would probably even, if, if if the finances were right and I could get a room, I would probably stay down there. Mm. I've, it's just I've a, done it before. It's amazing. It's, it's just a nice fun too. atmosphere to be in. There's so many people. I'm not typically one who likes to go to concerts and be in that large crowd, but I since it's board gaming and something I'm passionate about, mm-hmm. I love it. And I could walk that hall from the moment it opens at 10 a.m. until the moment it closes at six, and not see everything. And that's cool because I'll just I'll just keep walking that hall over and over. And I tell myself every year that I go to um, Gen Con, I say I'm going to sit down this year, and all the games that I pick up, I'm actually going to sit down and learn the rules <laughs> there, so, so I don't have to. It never happens. I don't learn a yeah. single rule when I'm there because I'm just walking and talking. And you know what's crazy about Gen Con, about walking the halls, is like you look at people like us, I would say that as far as the informed public, we're pretty high on the level of like we know what's coming out. We mm-hmm. see, what, but yeah, even so, we'll be walking through Gen Con and be like, what is this game? Yeah, exactly. Like, I've never heard of this. I've never seen this before. That's it looks amazing. Fav- that's my favorite thing uh, of, of any convention. Back when we used to go to E3 in the video game industry, mm-hmm. and after a while, we start, you know, you start to feel like, oh, well, I know everything that's coming on, but then you go there and that one company kept something super yeah. secret, and then they mm-hmm. reveal it, and it's, it's like kids on Christmas morning. You're like finding stuff out for the first time, and, and then if it's really good, and you're like, whoa! How did they? How did they keep the secret? And then on top of it, they go, oh, by the way, it's for sale. Yeah. Like stuff like that is crazy, and it's it makes the convention, at least the more consumer salesy type conventions, a lot more fun. 
like on the other end of the spectrum, like the gathering and stuff like that, I do enjoy the playing experience mm -hmm. of BGG or those sorts of things that you don't get at Gen Con. Like I really don't feel like I play too many games at Gen Con. And right. even when you do, we often sit down in the publisher area and play a round yeah. of it mm -hmm. uh, or just a, like a, the demo right. bite sized piece of it, which is still fun. But it doesn't. It doesn't have that same. It's not that same experience from a play standpoint. It's loud and noisy and hard. It to is. It's loud. Yeah. Well, and you're going to lose about ten pounds from walking. Not That's true. Time. It's you know. It's yeah. just so large. But I do. Right. I love the spectrum. I love that Thursday morning. That Thursday morning is just so. Yeah. It's so energizing. Fun. Right. It's, it's so energizing. That yeah. rush into there and everybody's like, get, who's you know, what's the hot game? Yeah. You know, if it's Mysterium one year, you know, it's Clank the next year. But I'm I'm like you. I love the convention where I can go and play, mm -hmm. yeah. and that's why I really loved Origin. But I tell you, after we went to Dice Tower Con last year, you know, I've never been to a convention. I think they cap it maybe three thousand, mm -hmm. and it doesn't feel like that at all. Really, big space. And yeah, yeah. Th it's a nice space. But you're just we played games. It was just like the library was huge. Play a game, go get another one. Play a game, go get another and one. No play problem game. finding players. No problem finding ever spots in other games. Right. Yeah. And the thing is, like with Gen Con. It's hard to do that. You're gonna have to buy the game or bring your game. Well, the space is impossible. The to space find. is yeah. hard to get as big as much as there is. Yeah, you're playing on the floor. It's still you're playing on the floor. Yeah. You're finding a table. Hope that some take it up. Yeah, I, I, I love. I do Gen love Con, the playing you're cons. Not gaming, you feel more, so more relaxed and yeah. you're enjoying yourself. Yeah, I would suggest too if you guys are uh, interested in going to conventions, make sure you guys book out way in advance. <laughs> oh, Most yes. of these tickets go on sale months in advance and sell out. Especially the more desired cons like your BGG, your Gen Con will sell out. Uh, also, if you guys are interested in going to these, get your rooms as well because yeah, they go oh, yeah, everyone's running in into problems for Gen Con already. Yeah, like well, well, they never had, they had, had the BGG, hotel. I mean, yeah. the, these yeah, hotels the fill up very, very quickly. So make sure you guys are on the front end of that. So and we are in Indiana, so if you want to rent some space, <laughs> yeah, right, for Airbnb, homes, <laughs> yeah, right here, you can sleep in our studio. <laughs> Give Jeremy a call. <laughs> yeah. You can turn these into convertible beds or something. <laughs> All right, let's talk about games we've been yeah. playing. <clears throat> Well, I've been playing. I mean, I've been playing a lot of games. Like you had talked oh. about, we just had that little convention. Yep. Over the weekend, I think I played something like twenty something games. What was your first game there? Over the course, the first game I played there was it Hansa. Was Hansa, Hansa Teutonica. Yeah, yeah. I, I played a lot of old school games over this weekend, which was great. I got to play Hansa. I got to play Concordia. Played Thanos with me. Thanos well, that's I, we did play Thanos. That's we not got, necessarily we got spanked. An old game. Oh my, <laughs> mm -hmm. that game is hard. <laughs> yeah, it's a tough but game. It's, it's what I like in a cooperative game mm -hmm. where you. You get destroyed, but you want to go, okay, let's reset. I think we could do it a little better this time. Well, right from the beginning, yeah. though, things things happened with the roll of the first few rounds where was, Ryan immediately I picked said, up the rule book. I said, how do you win this game? I was <laughs> like, no way. like, we... I think we're doing something that's wrong. A, that's a defense mechanism when he's yeah, getting beat really bad. Well, it's like the game where like, you could lose that game in two turns, really. Like, it's it could be bad. That's all of the heroes around Thanos were like all of a sudden injured twice. Yeah, it's like everybody's like dead before and we even like, started. it was like, wait a minute. Are you sure this is the way? Yeah. It's well, you know, the, the, theme, the theme makes that game. If it was any other theme, I probably would never play yeah, it. Yeah, the theme. Oh, it's the Avengers theme. We're all super ah, stoked. Man. We're yeah, all I'm super playing. stoked for it. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, I played, I mean, just a ton. <clears> it, it was a great experience. Rising Sun we played a huge game of and... Just yeah, I had to sit out that one to make sure there was room for other people that hadn't played it yet. Getting to play those old... I didn't know it was going to take you guys three hours <laughs> I didn't know it was going to play through. So that was a long game. <laughs> that was, a long that long was the game. first Rising Six Sun player, game though. I've played where people really leaned into the negotiation. And basically, in between every turn, there was just so much talking and planning and plotting, which right. made the game be three hours, but mm -hmm. at the same time, it was kind of cool to see that level of, of um, discussion and interaction. Yeah. So what have you been playing? You didn't you get, get to make it to IndyCon I didn't get to make it to IndyCon, but what have yeah. You been playing? But, um, you were invited. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still waiting for my invite. <laughs> um, you know, after playing Welcome to, the, the uh, card and write game, yeah. I finally broke down and got it because I've played it before, oh. but Knock Mall. Knock, Knock Mall. Mall. Yeah, we played that at Dice Tower, didn't we? We played it at yeah. Dice Tower kind of last year, that. and I and I pulled out my other ones. I, I don't know if uh, I do. It's it is it's it's a uh, Inca and Marcus brand. Okay. Oh. It is their roll and write game. Mm -hmm. okay. It is awesome. It is so much fun. I really really enjoy. It. You're just rolling dice. You're trying to fill up uh, colors and um, groups of colors. It's did a you, it's a puzzle. Did for you sure. like it more or less than Welcome? It's it not, was different. It's hard to compare. Very very different. What's it's the hard theme? To, 
It's it's not uh, a, it's an abs- it's an abstract <laughs> on colors and boxes. That's the theme. Okay. Yeah, it's, I, it's, it's a complete abstract. abstract. I think knock mall means play again or something. I don't know. I'm probably wrong. I don't know. I don't speak <laughs> <laughs> German. Gary's just making yeah, stuff up. I'm making stuff up. But uh, in fact, because it's great because I got that game, I told my family about out in Seattle, they got it, and they can't stop playing it. Really? So it's a good it's game. It's a really good game. Oh, and a lot I pulled of out my Rolling right American and played with that uh, with some uh, people at work. So that's another roll and write, which is fun. All right. Well, like I said at the beginning, we went to conventions. We played a few new things. Uh, I played one uh, one of Connor Magui's new games from Inside Up, and I can't talk about it. And then we played, uh, well, I didn't play it, but I heard about The Mind. Are you going to talk about The Mind? I can talk about The yeah. Mind. Did I you played get to play that? I taunt. I Everybody's talking about this. Okay. It's like the number one on BGG right now, isn't it? It's, yeah. up, it's there. Like up there. It's up there. So the only other things I played, I taught a lot of people games that we've, we've talked about in the last few mm-hmm. weeks because I played Surprise, them. surprise. I, I, I played Council of Four again with some people at IndieCon. The new uh, version? Yeah, the yeah. new version. Had a lot of fun with that. I, I really like that game. Mm-hmm. It's interesting. I can't get away from one strategy even though it hasn't won me <laughs> the game yet. But... Um, so I played that and played Space Base again. Uh, Space Base like, is fantastic. That's, that's my game right now that I want to teach everybody. It's so quick, like, it's yeah. so easy, easy to play and fun, and, and yeah, everyone cool. seems to have fun with it. So yeah. very cool. That's what I've been. Uh, another game I'll talk about is Yes with a bunch of S's oh, at the yeah. end. Oh, yeah. That's that was, we played we, that at IndyCon. We, yeah, we played that at IndyCon. It's kind of like a Codenames game, and it's really fun. Yeah. It's, it's a unique uh, twist on that Codenames formula. For yeah, sure. I wouldn't. It's like Codenames, but if you think, oh, well, I've played Codenames. You really should give Yes a try because it's unique and it, it feels a little more intense. Yeah, the names. same company that put out uh, Welcome To. Yeah. yeah. Oh, um, really? I got to sit over the shoulder of some people at Gamma and watched Kids on Bikes. And I'm not an RPG guy. Yeah, Kids on Bikes is But great. I listened to it for about 15 minutes and I was like enthralled like enough that I want to now try it. Really? We got to play that at Gen- I got to play that at Gen Con. It's a cool last year, yeah. It's a cool system, it's a cool storyline, it's cool how you control your characters, it's cool how you control the superpower character. It's just really neat. It's a really neat so game. I What's the the, I mean, your kids on kids bike. On now bike. You're starting to like Stranger Things. <laughs> no, it is. It, 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 it is, is. kind of like a Spielberg oh, Stranger kind Things role playing like game. That nostalgic. Okay. Thing. Oh, that's Stranger cool. Things, couple, uh, ET, yeah. Goonies, sort Goonies, of. Yeah, Goonies, yeah, absolutely. A couple great designers behind it. All yeah, right. the artwork's fantastic. So I, too. We're probably I'm, watching, so make sure to say nice things about them. <laughs> uh, two more games. Uh, I'll talk about the mind first. Uh, I have played that a lot. I probably played twenty games of the mind when I was there. It's a, because everyone is talking. It's a super simple game. You have a stack of a hundred cards. It sounds like that one game called the game, mm. uh, except everyone's dealt. Uh, so there's ten rounds in the game, and each round's represented by the number of cards that players get. So in round four, everyone gets four cards. Mm. So depending on the number of your players, uh, it gets it scales in difficulty. But basically, everyone gets one of those one hundred cards, uh, and you look at your cards and you see the numbers that you have. You just kind of look around the table. There's no talking, and you try to figure out who has the lowest number because you want that player to play their low number for the numbers you play. If you're out of sequence, everyone loses a life. And uh. it's the most simple game, <laughs> but it's there's something fascinating and fun yeah, about it. It sounds, in some level, it sounds <clears throat> stupid, right? It sounds dumb, <laughs> but, yeah. I mean. But it, you have to play it, I think, to really experience it because, yeah, everyone who's played it, has it's, loved it. It's I hilarious. Mean, yeah, it's. it's I it, think that's only in Europe right now. I don't, I don't even think you can uh, get it right. Pandasaurus just announced that they're bringing it uh, to the U.S. today, which is exciting. Oh, that's really? Uh, the last one I'll talk about. We're doing a preview for Court of the Dead. Last year, what a workshops got into the board game industry with giant killer robots. This year, we're going to see Sideshow Collectibles. Yeah. <laughs> These guys are huge. If you guys don't know who Sideshow Collectibles are, they do. Statues of some of the most all sorts incredible of IP, IPs, Star Wars, size, Marvel, yeah. all sorts uh, of things. Some that I've collected for years, but they're doing a game called Court of the Dead: Mourner's Call. It's actually up here on the um, the wall here. It is an area control game. Uh, this is being designed by a very intelligent designer. Uh, it's got that IP, and we found out that when we do this, we're going to be able to run a sweepstakes and give yeah. away a very, very expensive statue. Yeah, it's like this tall and it is one of those yeah, I think yeah, Court of the Dead is incredible Court of the Dead if you don't know is their own IP right, I was yeah. going to say that's the cool thing about this is this yeah. is like the kickstarting like a whole new universe of yeah, they have, like, IP they, for they, them they've been doing uh, pieces for this IP they have comic for years. books they have yeah. all sorts of stuff they've built this this is their 
own original thing as opposed to doing all the uh, other mm -hmm. IP that they and do. And this is the first game they've come out with. Yeah, this is the first, first game first, for yeah. sure. And uh, Pat Marino mm -hmm. is the designer of the game. And it definitely, we haven't played it yet, but they Just gave us an today. overview. Yeah. And it has that sort of, I don't want to pigeonhole it, but it has that sort of like Simon esque blood ragey sort mm -hmm. of vibe going on. <laughs> Really beautiful miniatures, obviously, because yeah. it's modeled after these characters from uh, Sideshow. But we're looking forward to that. Yeah, That'll look cool. for more about the sweepstakes. We'll have one uh, when we do the preview. You can get an idea of what it's going to look like. Uh, enter the sweepstakes. and I have one more win. game to talk about. Uh-oh. <laughs> it's not one I've played. It's not uh -oh. Knock em All. It's one, <laughs> it's one that Ryan's probably played because he's a part of it. Ryan, there's a Kickstarter going on right now. Oh, yeah, that's right. right. Yeah. Right now. yeah, funded uh, in 12 hours. That's Gear, awesome. Very Gears exciting. of Defiance, right? Gears of Defiance, that's this it. This is an RPG. Ryan is the resident RPG nerd. Uh, at, at I guess the, so. Uh, yeah, now we got, we got Ryan Jeremy does. playing playing kids on bikes over there. I know. So. If you guys didn't know, Ryan writes RPGs for yeah. a variety of different. That's companies. what I do for my day job. Yeah, um, RPG writing basically. But yeah, this is all mine. I wrote I wrote this game, and it's your baby. It's my baby. I've been working on it for years. The reception has been great so far. Yeah, funded really quickly. Funded right? in 12, less than twelve hours. If yeah. you haven't been out there, go check it out. It looks really. Cool. I have a He's lot of uh, a lot of a lot of game designers too. set to write for it, which is cool. We just. Um, Sen Fung Lim, who did yep. Junk Art, that's probably mm -hmm. what he's famous for. Uh, actually, the two guys that did Kids on Bikes are doing some stuff for me for Gears that's of Defiance awesome. as well, yeah. which is pretty cool. Very so. cool. A little I've round of applause played for it. our own Ryan Scooter. <laughs> yeah, right? It's exciting. All right. So that's it for yeah. episode 15. 15, wow. Of Chit Chat. Uh, please come back and watch us next time. And remember, if you need an insert, Go check out the Broken Token because they most certainly probably have an insert for whatever game you've been playing. <laughs> Thanks a lot, everybody. Well, that's another episode of Chit Chat in the Bag. Thanks for watching. If you want to check out another one, there's probably one right over here in the bottom left-hand corner or probably your right-hand corner. Whatever corner, we have something to click on. So click on one of these things and good things will happen.